Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Mahaliyati Mukalme, the dedicated podcast for the Climate and Environment Initiative at RSIL. Today we have the pleasure of being joined by Mr. Hamad Naki Khan. Hamad Naki Khan is the CEO of WWF Pakistan. He possesses more than 30 years of professional experience in climate change adaptation, sustainable agriculture, market transformation and greening the supply chain, food security, water management, resource mobilization, and partnership building. Hamad is a member of the senior executive team for Asia Pacific Growth Strategy and a fellow of LEAD Pakistan. He is also a non-official member of Pakistan's Climate Change uh, Committee chaired by the Prime Minister. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Maha. So today the topic that we'll be talking about is biodiversity loss in Pakistan and why it matters. Um, So we know that loss of biodiversity is one of the biggest threats to uh, the general ecosystem of the world. And Pakistan is home to a lot of rare species and rich biodiversity, um, which are at threat of being um, extinct. So before we go into a more technical discussion, um, could you give us an idea of what biodiversity is and what we mean when we talk about biodiversity loss? Okay, so biodiversity is, is life on Earth. Mm-hmm. It's literally every every level, uh, living being you know around us includes uh, plants, animals, even you know all kinds of insects, bacteria. Um, secondly, we need to understand that the role which biodiversity plays, mm-hmm. um, it's literally uh, you know supports the life, even our life. Uh, We need clean air, we need clean water, we need food, we need medicines. You pick, uh, you know, any area and you'll find out the role uh, which, you know, these organisms play in ensuring that we get clean air, that we get clean water, that we get food and that we get even that we get when we are ill, we get the medicines. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these effects aren't really visible unless you look for them. So the importance of biodiversity, I feel, is often overlooked um, because we're not really um, aware of how much goes into the process. Yeah. So this is like, a, uh, you know, as uh, uh, the, the science says, it's a web of life. Mm-hmm. So there is an interdependence. Every uh, living thing has a role to play. Uh, the nature has produced something, you know, for a certain role. Uh, And if you break that web or if you damage one, you know, uh, stretch of one string in in that web, then you are literally uh, damaging and destroying the entire web. I think that's the relationship. Uh, And the relationship between um, the human uh, and uh, the biodiversity I think uh, post-COVID, it has become clearer. Mm -hmm. Uh, COVID was was one of the zoonotic diseases. These are the diseases which originate from wildlife uh, and then, you know, they transmit uh, to human. Uh, This is not for the first time that such uh, uh, diseases, you know, have emerged. And I don't think that this is the last time Mm-hmm. that uh, such a pandemic uh, that the humans are facing. Uh, in this particular case, uh, again, um, as I said, um, it was originated from wildlife. And I think the major reason is where we people, the human, we have started intruding into mm-hmm. the homes and into the habitats of uh, other species. We feel that uh, this entire planet is just for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been very selfish, to be honest. Um, and But I think the, the message is loud and clear. Um, if you do not protect the habitats, if you do not protect the wildlife, the impact will be upon us. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely something um, that we'll touch upon later as well. Yeah. Um, But before we get into that, uh, we've heard a lot of conversation around this idea of a triple planetary crisis. 
um, of air pollution, biodiversity loss, and climate change. Yeah. Um, but there's not really much discussion about what the relationship between climate change and biodiversity loss yeah. is. Um, so could you give us more of an idea about that? Okay, if you look at the, the major factors which, res which result in biodiversity loss, mm -hmm. Uh, the first one and the topmost is the habitat destruction, where we are damaging the habitat, the homes of different species. The second could be the, the direct exploitation of different species. Mm -hmm. The third is, and for third and fourth, I mean, you can mention them in any order, but is the pollution and the climate change. Mm -hmm. um, the science is very clear that climate change will be the the major factor of biodiversity loss. Maybe at, at this point, maybe it's, uh, you know, at number three. Uh, because if you look at the, the you know, for, for our, uh, the, the, the human impact or the factors which result in climate change. Climate change is primarily because, you know, the greenhouse gases mm -hmm. are, are increasing. And the major reason is fossil fuel or maybe we are damaging uh, the land. We are bringing more land into agriculture. Uh, we are polluting the environment. Uh, so these are the major factors of climate change. Now, if you look at the factors which are also damaging for, uh, for biodiversity, mm -hmm. again, it's the land use change. The way we are damaging our forest, the way we are damaging our water bodies, the way we are uh, literally polluting our, uh, our oceans, um, our seas. Now, so climate change obviously uh, impacts wildlife, impacts biodiversity. Uh, the recent heat waves and the forest fires yeah. is one example. Uh, the way the temperature of oceans uh, is increasing um, and then it has an impact on literally the uh, most of the the, the marine life. Mm -hmm. I can give you I can give you specific examples. Uh, take the example of uh, snow leopard. Snow leopard, uh, you know, as uh, as a species, um, it's a kind of a migratory species. It mm -hmm. uh, it requires a huge uh, territory. Now, because of the fact that um, the snow and the, uh, is melting, the, the glaciers are shrinking, they are melting, mm -hmm. the habitat of snow leopard is shrinking. So the snow leopard is now uh, being spotted in areas which used to be the habitat of common leopard. So that's where there's, a, there's also a conflict because, um, you know, the snow leopard uh, as a predator needs prey, you know, uh, for its survival and common leopard also. Um, and the common leopard habitat is also shrinking because as human, we are damaging the forest. We are bringing the forest into agriculture or into other uses, housing colonies or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we are intruding. And the result is that both these species, uh, I can give you the example of marine turtles. Marine turtles, uh, for nesting, they have to, you know, come to the beaches. Yes. A, uh, the human are uh, doing all kinds of development, mm -hmm. you know, those beaches. B, because of the temperature increase, uh, because they need, you know, the, the, the eggs are hashed in the, in, the, in the sand. Because of the temperature increase, you know, when the incubation happens, if the temperature is, uh, is high, they will be more female turtles. That's the science. Mm -hmm. And there will be less male turtles. Uh, so the top layer, wherever the, you know, the egg layers, uh, the temperature will be more and you'll see that there will be more female turtles, uh, uh, hatchlings. And obviously down um, uh, in the sand, you'll see uh, maybe more male. So that's where the entire population dynamics of, and once you know the, the 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 temperature of ocean water increases, that also has impact on the on, on the marine life. So you pick you pick you know literally any species, and you'll see uh, that it's being impacted by uh, the climate change. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And then I think it's also important to note that um, while climate change can lead to biodiversity loss, conservation of biodiversity can also help us in the battle yeah. against climate change. Um, so when we're planting more yeah. trees, protecting ecosystems, yeah. uh, we can really reduce emissions yeah. um, and mitigate climate change. Um, and as well with uh, planting more mangrove ecosystems, protecting the mangroves that we have, yeah. um, that helps us adapt to climate change because we're preventing flooding in parts of Karachi along the coast. Um, so this relationship is um, very uh, interlinked. It's very interlinked and it's very important. If you look at the underlying factors, they are, uh, you, cannot, you, you cannot just pick one and ignore others. And maybe that's the reason if you look at the, the mandate of uh, relevant global legally binding instruments, these multilateral environmental agreements for climate change, if it's uh, uh, UNFCCC, for biodiversity, it's the CBD, the Convention of Biological Diversity. By the way, uh, in August, COP15 is happening in Kunming, China. That's just like the COP26 for climate change in Glasgow. That's the, you know, it's... It's, I mean, if it's not more important, yeah. it's almost, you know, it's getting the same importance because everybody feels, as I said earlier, that these are all interlinked. Mm -hmm. And again, one can give so many examples. I mean, in our case, take the example of, uh, you mentioned mangroves, take the example of Indus Delta. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the, one of the, the, the healthy mangroves forest. This is one of the large deltas. Uh, and this is a, a delta which is rich in, you know, uh, biodiversity or maybe used to be very rich in biodiversity. What's happening? The happening is that uh, the, now there is less water going into the delta. There is less sediments going into the delta. Uh, obviously, the people are suffering, but it's not just the people. They were These were the people who used to depend on, you know, uh, the, the services which this entire ecosystem mm -hmm. provides. And it's not just the people who depend on the services. It's also the biodiversity. Now, mangroves are very important for, um, for a lot of, you know, marine life because uh, as part of their, uh, the different stages of life, they, they have to come, you know, to mangroves. Mm -hmm. And this is also, important for our economy yeah. uh, because uh, seafood is one of the or at least efforts are being made that it becomes one of the leading uh, foreign exchange uh, 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 raising uh, activity. So you damage the mangroves mm -hmm. and the delta because there's less water coming and these, by the way, these species of mangroves, they need both seawater and uh, fresh water. Uh, and then there are other anthropogenic threats, which are threats caused by, uh, by a human. They cut, you know, for fodder. They cut sometimes for fuel. Um, so along with the natural uh, reasons of factors, these are, there are also uh, the we as people responsible for damaging. So I think the bottom line is that uh, the factors and a lot of interventions which need to be made to address these challenges, whether they are related to uh, loss in biodiversity, mm -hmm. whether they are related to uh, addressing the climate change, or whether they are related to addressing the issues related to poverty. Mm -hmm. um, and that's maybe that's the reason that we say that this is not just a you know, biodiversity loss, I think, let me be very clear about that. Uh, it's not just a ecological or environmental issue. Mm -hmm. It's a issue, it's a, it's a, it's a social issue. It's a, yeah. you know, economical issue. It's a, it's also in a, in a way a political issue. Uh, it's a development issue. So we need to we need to keep that in mind because uh, it's just like all right you know we need to develop uh, and we will look into the these issues related to wildlife or habitat later not not at all we have seen this I think we need to treat COVID as a wake up call as a, mm -hmm. as, a, as a as a warning as a, literally as a warning 
that look, uh, you disturb, you damage one area and look what happens to you. And I think you raised a really good point on uh, the fact that loss of biodiversity is an economic issue. Yeah. Um, because I think the general perception is um, that why should we care about the environment? And um, then we fail to recognize that actually the environment is one of the largest sources of income for lots of people in Pakistan. Yeah. Um, so the juniper forests in uh, Ziarat, for example, um, those provide um, not only uh, like wood for consumption, but it's also wood for sale. So a lot of communities who live near yeah. areas of um, ecosystems that are rich in biodiversity, they depend on those areas. Yeah. So uh, any action that we take really needs to consider people and consider the economic aspect of it as well. I mean, uh, look, Maha, there are so many examples. Uh, recently, the forest fire in Shirani district in Balochistan, mm -hmm. they damaged a, a significant uh, area of Chilgoza forest, the pine trees. Now, Chilgoza forest is a uh, gold egg laying hen. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, uh, if you if you try to get all the gold from the hen, you cut the tree, you sell it. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to utilize the benefits or you want to have a regular income, then you have to protect Chilgoza tree. Mm -hmm. So where you get, you know, uh, the Chilgozas, you, uh, Chilgozas, you can sell it at a very good price. And that's where you earn, you know, your livelihoods. Um, uh, same is the case with medicinal plants. Uh, medicinal plants play a very important role, not only in, you know, for the pharma industry, but for the livelihoods of local communities. And you talked about the indigenous local communities because their livelihoods depend. Uh, we have seen that, that uh, the most of the people, the indigenous people, uh, you know, who used to live uh, in an area which is close to the forest or uh, any area which is close to an ecologically sensitive site, they were literally the custodian of, uh, you know, those species. Take the people of, uh, you know, the, who live in the mountains. They, so they used to protect markhors. They used to protect blue sheep, Marco Polo sheep. Uh, it's, it's outsiders mostly. It's the poachers. Um, and I can give you so many examples. Green turtles. I forgot to mention the, another major threat. And it mm -hmm. suddenly, you know, came into my mind. Which is the illegal wildlife trade. Which yes. is literally, uh, it's, a, it's, it's one of the organized crimes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the top four or five organized crimes. Along with the human trafficking, the drugs business and, you know, the counter uh, fake um, products business. Um, so, who obviously there are uh, there's there's a su uh, supply market and there's a demand market. You have to address both. The demand market is primarily the rich developed countries mm -hmm. because um, or maybe the south uh, the southeast Asia where uh, the local population or there's, uh, there's a there's a segment of society who you know, depend for, for medicinal purposes or for delicacy, food delicacy purposes on this wildlife. The supply market is countries like Pakistan, mm -hmm. where pangolins are killed for scales, where freshwater turtles are illegally, where migratory birds, falcons, you know, uh, are poached and then sold. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the, again, uh, we have to ensure that along with other threats, this is also a major threat for biodiversity loss. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the reason that as a, as a leading conservation organization, we always say that we need to have a holistic approach. Uh, it's very difficult to have one size fits all kind of uh, a solution. Mm -hmm. um, as I said earlier, um, maybe the, the local community gets 200 rupees for a, uh, for a freshwater turtle. It can be sold for up to like $1,000 mm. uh, in the international market. Same goes with some of the, you know, the, the pallet, uh, sorry, the, the, uh, uh, the scales, the, the, pangolins. the pangolins, sorry. 
So uh, maybe they get a couple of thousand rupees, but the amount of money uh, which is, uh, I mean, fetched uh, after selling these scales in the illegal market is, is, is manifold. So that's also a, a threat and which needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And I think Pakistan is home to so many species that aren't um, native to anywhere else in yeah. the world. Um, so <clears throat> that's why it's important for us to also feel like the custodians of these species. Because if we're not protecting them and making sure that this illegal trade isn't taking place, mm -hmm. then our future generations will never get the chance to see these species. Um, and I think that's a very scary thought that they can be um, driven to extinction by our actions. Yeah. I mean, if you look at uh, WWF, uh, every other year we comes up with a living planet index. Mm -hmm. That's where we work with uh, the world's leading research organizations. Uh, the idea is to assess the root causes of biodiversity loss. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the root causes and uh, are the actions enough? If not, where are the gaps? Uh, what are the risks which are still there? And the role of governments, the role of civil society, the, the, the role of private sector. Mm -hmm. uh, we strongly feel that um, the, the present regulatory framework, the present policy framework, uh, the present role of uh, key stakeholders is not enough. Mm -hmm. We strongly believe that we must have a new deal for nature and that's the campaign that we are literally uh, pushing we're doing a lot of lobbying and uh, advocacy for the CB uh, the CBD COP15 as well where we are that's uh, what we pushed at Davos uh, last last month mm -hmm. um, for where the the leaders from the corporate sector were present along with key government officials that uh, it's uh, the challenges are so big mm -hmm. that you can't say, OK, this is your role. You are the government. You have all the resources. You are the private sector. You manage this or, you know, it's WWF, such a big organization. Why don't you, you know, do this? Mm -hmm. Every individual, every uh, entity has to play its role. It's a matter of our own survival. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, I think uh, I keep on saying that, uh, yes, we say that climate change is the biggest threat to humanity. Uh, for a country like us, climate change is water change. Water is life and we feel uh, our population is increasing. But equally important is the, is the, the biodiversity. Uh, for, we, are, we are an agrarian economy. Look what we have done with beneficial insects by the indiscriminate use of chemicals. Mm -hmm. Where are the, we recently did a study for butterflies, coniferous forest in the, the, the Murray areas. You know, the, the 14 species of butterfly are not, you know, they're not present. They're gone in, just in that particular area. Similarly, uh, uh, you know, even uh, as, a, as, a, as a citizen, I still remember when I was a kid, we used to catch uh, fireflies, jugnu, and then we used to put it like, you know, or uh, arrest that firefly in, uh, you know, mother's dubatta, and then see that, you know, that light blinking. You don't see those fireflies. Fireflies are gone. Uh, honeybees, the population has significantly decreased. And all these species, they are either pollinated. So they play a very important role. It's not okay, it doesn't matter. We can, you know, look at the, uh, on the internet or uh, a book. We don't want that our children, you know, see all these beautiful creatures, all these important species just in the books. Because um, I don't think that uh, uh, that, that would be, that would be a disaster. Mm -hmm. And you're, um, when you mentioned agriculture and how we need to consider biodiversity yeah. in agriculture, I think that's something that for Pakistan um, needs to be at the forefront. We need to be looking at how to yeah. maximize the space that we have without yeah. cutting down more forests, more um, yeah. draining wetlands to provide water for irrigation. 
Um, so I think biodiversity is something that needs to be at the forefront of discussions on agriculture as well. It is. Um, but we also, you know, because the, the counter argument, mm -hmm. uh, which primarily comes from the, the politicians and um, the bureaucracy, uh, is again, we have uh, uh, too many mouths to, to feed mm -hmm. and too many people uh, to provide fiber. So food and fiber, uh, natural fiber, cotton, you know, uh, primarily uh, there are other, but so uh, we need uh, extensive, uh, we need biotechnology, we need, you know, um, and doesn't matter because if we uh, ask our farmers to reduce the use of agrochemicals, the yields will come down. Mm -hmm. Now, as an organization, we are working, we have a sustainable agriculture program. We are working with uh, more than 200,000 farmers, 250,000 farmers. And we have proven that uh, you, can, you can reduce the use of agrochemicals without impacting the yield. You can reduce the use of water which is again very, as you mentioned, sometimes the wetlands. Take the example of salt rain. There used to be a cluster of wetlands, Khabeki, Jhalar, uh, you know, those lakes. So sometimes, obviously, the drought or less precipitation is one factor. But sometimes people also, you know, um, take the water out, mm -hmm. grow a very low value commodity. In this case, it was cauliflower. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if it's a high value crop, Maybe, obviously, that's also not advisable, but you can say that, okay, you know, you can use the water in an efficient manner mm -hmm. because you are growing a high value crop. But a crop which is like, you know, um, literally a very low value, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a key habitat for migratory birds. Mm -hmm. So at what cost we are damaging the habitat uh, and the cost that we are paying? The problem is, uh, that we do not uh, attach a dollar sign with the services which these species or these ecosystems. So and that's the reason that we sometimes, you know, we do uh, we advocate for payments for ecosystem services because, oh no, it's a small talab, it's a small wetland. Even if it dries up, doesn't matter. There will be more rain next year. There will be water and it will be fine. There will be fish. The migratory birds can come again. No, they're very intelligent creatures. They change their rules. Now we have seen that there are less, uh, obviously there are other threats. We also uh, hunt. <laughs> we eat a lot of birds. So the migratory birds have also changed their rule. Mm -hmm. um, you can, and one can observe that. And then I think it's important to have a holistic view of biodiversity, keeping in mind biodiversity, the services it provides yeah. people, and then people's need to survive and um, make their livelihood as well. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, uh, uh, you also mentioned uh, agriculture. Even if you just pick one sector, mm -hmm. um, so we, we uh, as part of our program, uh, we observed that because of the indiscriminate use of pesticides, most of the, the beneficial insects have also vanished because uh, the sales agent of a pesticide company will come, will pick. Most of the farmers, they are illiterate. They don't have, you know, maybe access to uh, good, info, the, at least the, the desirable information, even the desirable information. Uh, so they'll come, they, they can, sometimes they even pick a beneficial insect and they will tell the farmer uh, that your uh, crop is, uh, is infested. I mean, you need to, and I have this magical product, why don't you use it and it will get rid of uh, all those, you know, insects and you definitely will improve your yield. Mm. So, I mean, I'm not saying that this is something which is very common, but just to give you one example where just because of the fact that um, maybe uh, as part of our education and as part of our uh, efforts to build the capacity of our producers, our farmers, 
um, we are not uh, adequately addressing this. And the result is that, and it's the money. It's not just the chemical, it's their money. Look at the prices of chemicals. So the cost, it's not just the, the cost of production goes significantly up. Uh, the gross margins are reduced. And that's the entry point, you know, for an organization like WWF. We do not talk about bees and butterflies and fireflies we are, because they said, okay, shut up, you know, I need to buy food for my family. I need to buy clothes for my family. So we always, our entry point is money. This mm -hmm. is this is your money. You have to spend the money uh, efficiently. And uh, we we would like that whenever you decide to use a certain chemical or you decide to irrigate your crop, it has to be based on some solid, you know, information. Mm -hmm. uh, when the crop really, really uh, needs that. So informed uh, decision making. Um, so that's like a, that's like a, you know, a, a big effort. Um, but we feel it's very important. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Hamad Saab, for this very, very insightful discussion on biodiversity in Pakistan, what is being done by WWF and what can be done in the future. Um, I'm sure our audience enjoyed it. Um, please tune in for our next episode of Mahaliyati Mukalme, and you can watch our last episode on climate change litigation with Azhar Lahari. Thank you so much. <laughs>